Hello everyone, welcome in to the first episode of a brand new series here on the channel. We are here on Football Manager 2023 and this is our Roma series. So here we are, so excited to get into this. If you are new to the channel, welcome along. My name's Ash or Brahma18, whichever you prefer. And this is the very first series of Football Manager that we are doing here on the series. I'm a massive fan of the game. I've been playing them for many, many years. I think I sink more hours into it than I do FIFA, which is what we primarily covered on the channel. Um, but up till now, I haven't done a series. So this is a first and I'm really, really excited to get into this. As you can see, we have chosen AS Roma to do our series with. I wanted something a little bit different for one. Don't want to do the same old Premier League stuff. Very bored of that. But also, I felt like I kind of owe you guys a Roma series because we did one on Pez um, over a year ago now and it didn't last. We didn't finish it because... Ultimately, it just wasn't really getting the traction that I wanted. I couldn't justify dedicating it to. So I feel like there's some unfinished business here. And what better way than to take charge of AS Roma as Jose Mourinho. I've tried to make it as realistic as I possibly can. Obviously, it's disappointing that you can't kind of um, take over as a, a real manager. That's never something they've had in the game. But we're trying our best and really excited to get into this one. So what can you expect from this series, from this episode? We're just going to go on as long as it takes really until it comes to a natural conclusion. Obviously, as of recording this, we are on the beta, but I, pre I predict that this series is going to go on beyond the beta and just to a point where, you know, we come to a natural conclusion. Naturally, our objectives, if we have a look here, um, are to qualify for the Champions League this year. Um, so naturally that's what we'll be aiming for and then next season they want us to win the title or at least challenge for the title so you know we'll see how that one goes I think that's a tough ask for, to do that for next year but you know we'll see with regards to this episode today it's generally going to be a bit of housekeeping now we may have the first game or two to show you um, but generally I want to go through, through things like tactics, set pieces, transfers, we'll go through the squad, all of that good stuff. Elsewhere for the series we'll really come back for certain games so I imagine episode 2 we might come back for say Lazio Juventus double header uh, and then leave it again, come back for a little bit later in the season, somewhere like Milan, Torino etc um, and we'll keep doing that and we'll make sure to have recaps each episode as well. So then, here we are on the homepage. We've got a few new features already. I really like this, the update of the kind of supporters influence. Um, we've got all these different sections of the crowd, the hardcore, core, the family, etc. Surprised I thought they'd have a little bit of a higher hardcore um, kind of percentage, but there you go. Some cool new features here, supporters influence. You've got the season ticket waiting list, the social media followers. So that's really cool as well. So then let's have a quick look at the squad. This is the personal squad view I use. I like to have the abilities on there. I also like to have the wage and the year that their contract expires as well. So there's things like nationality, etc. That's sort of just how I like to play. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of good players sprinkled in here. Granted, some are injured. You know, Jorginho Wijnaldum. Nicolo Zaniolo, these guys injured for a few months, three months and five months respectively. So that's disappointing. But then we've got the likes of obviously Paolo Dybala, Tammy Abraham, Chris Smalling on this game. Really good. Really good. And he's even wanted by Newcastle, PSG, Juventus. That is, wow, pretty impressive. 17, 17, 17, you know, for marking, heading and tackling. That's like pretty good so i predict he's going to be quite an important part of this defense naturally we've got the likes of lorenzo pellegrini who we see captaining this club most likely uh, for the foreseeable future as he does in real life so roma born and bred so that's really good and then we've got some good young players coming in as well the likes of zalewski for one we've got bove here um, who is not as highly rated as i thought he he probably could be but definitely one that we can kind of work on 
I don't predict that we'll be going out and really making too many signings because ultimately uh, the transfer budget is quite small as they usually are in the first season, only 12 million uh, and we are maxed out on our wage budget, 1.8 million. So we do need to do something about that. I think things can be done to try and trim that down throughout this season because um, I think it's a little bit unsustainable if you're not playing Champions League football. Um, so... Yeah, but for now, I don't expect too much movement. And before we go on, I want to reach out to you guys. I want to know, for any of you playing Football Manager 2023, what your first save on Football Manager 2023 is. Really interested to hear that. Why have you picked that team as well as like who you're playing? Really interested to hear. So if you do want to let me know, comment section down below and tell me who you are playing as. So let's talk quickly about the tactics. Very, very tough to narrow this one down. I tinkered with a couple of different formations. We could have gone with one striker and then two attack midfielders, but that's not a system I've ever really played. And I didn't feel overly comfortable with that. So we have opted for this instead. As you'll see, it's very much in the mould of Jose Mourinho. I wanted to kind of keep that going. I didn't want to come in and completely change the complexion of everything. That's not how the squad has been designed. I don't think it's fair either. I want to continue Jose's work. Um, so we stuck with that kind of five back. It's a 5-3-2, a cautious mentality. Now, I'll be honest... I'll confess here, I have never ever been successful on Football Manager playing a defensive system. I've always very much, whenever I've had success, it's been positive attacking mentality. It's been very extreme pressing, a high line, offside trap, high kind of tempo. This is something very different. Very, very different. However, they made a big thing this year that it is now going to be a little bit easier to play in those defensive styles. They want you to be successful regardless of your style being able to play all sorts of styles so we're going to test that out we're going to put that to the test we're going to stick with the Mourinho mentality it's going to be very pragmatic a little bit cautious here as you can see if we go to out of possession more of a mid block we're going to boost the defensive line up a little bit but that's to try and compact those lines vertically a mid block in terms of line of engagement we're going to stick to that philosophy of counter attacking they want to hit teams quickly on the break and that's what we're looking to do here uh, and then in possession again higher tempo in the ball generally want to play it a little bit shorter because i think they do that they they do like to kind of play out from the back if and when they can um but then on kind of the individual instructions for example, the centre-backs here, we've got them on take more risks. So if they need to, they can then kind of go more direct, playing to these guys in the channels who, you know, we have both of them on moving to the channels and then we can go from there. As you can see, I very much tailored it around the players we have. So Dybala will slot nicely into this deep line forward role. Again, could you have got him in attacking midfield? Maybe, but then that would have changed the formation. We'd have had to go for something completely different. I didn't feel comfortable doing that. The likes of Pellegrini, Cristante, Zaniolo, I think they can slot in here. Zaniolo probably can do deep line forward as well. So there are kind of options here. We've got the likes of Matic, Camara, Cristante, who can play defensive midfield and, and a lot of centre-backs as well. So there's a lot of people who can kind of slot in here. I've gone through and done all my set pieces as well. Generally, kind of the same old. We've got far post, near post routines. The same with kind of throw-ins as well. We've got short and long. Um, you know, with regards to kind of defending, it's going to be very much a hybrid system of man marking and also zonal. Um, so that's really the, the way I like to defend on FM and I think Jose does that the same way as well. Naturally, I have no idea if this is going to be successful or not, so we need the first few games to kind of test that out and see for ourselves. With regards to the staff, as you can see, quite low in ratings. That's something I am going to sort out. We've got some spaces here to, to bring in some more coaches, um, so that's something we are going to be looking at. I'm very much one of these people who the first thing I do on Football Manager is staff replace all the staff and, and get in my own guys so we are going to add that like i say with with five slots we can we can do a little bit of something there training i like to do myself i basically like to do everything myself i'll be honest um so we're going through and doing that i like to really batter my players in pre-season and that's what we'll be doing here we'd probably like to add in another pre-season game or two we've only got three as of the base game so let's see about that and also let's have a quick look at the youth academy a couple of players here now darbo i'm surprised i thought he would be rated a little bit higher. He's someone who has broken into the team last season. Uh, and I thought that, you know, generally they'd, they'd be a bit higher on him, but not. Um, you know, the best one we've got is um, Giacomo Faticanti, uh, currently 17 years old. His contract is expiring at the end of this season, so we're not going to kind of um, 
hang around on that we're going to get that done it'd be good to kind of have a look at these new discuss new contract with agents and, and stuff like that another cool feature that they've added and we'll see how that goes so hello everyone welcome back we are here on the first game of the season against spezia really excited to get into this one but before we can get into that first game we've got a lot to kind of talk about across the entire preseason. so let's have a talk about that it's probably best to start off with transfers i think now not too busy as we said we've signed a couple of players that we're going to go into shortly we've sold a couple as well uh mainly just kind of fringe youth players who who weren't gonna kind of make the first team uh, we've also sold Eldor Shomorodov as well naturally with the likes of Belotti, Dybala and Abraham up front there's just not going to be much room for him. He was already transfer listed as well anyway. So we got two million for him. But most importantly, we got his way off the books, which was, um, you know, fairly hefty. Other than that, a couple of lone players going out, Volpato. And then, like I say, just some kind of youth players who didn't really have what it took to uh, to reach the first team. So nothing too much on the sale front. With regard to signings, we just made a couple of loan deals. One was Roberto Jaliadini. Uh, from Inter. Now, this is just a straightforward loan. The reason being is that his contract actually expires in 2023 at the end of the season. So, if we do want to make it permanent, we have the view to do that because I don't anticipate Inter Milan making uh, or extending his deal. So, just paying his full wages and 50 grand uh, every month as well, which brings it to around 500,000, which is a loan fee, which isn't too bad. Uh, with him, I see his role as the box to box midfielder. Um, what we are doing is we're playing Brian Cristante as the main boxer box midfielder. But if you have a look and compare these two together, you'll notice that they're very similar. You know, they're in a very similar mould. They're both tall. They've both got similar physical traits as well, even similar ages. Um, so it is pretty much like for like, and that's what we're looking for here. We're going to play him as that boxer box midfielder um, and rotate him in with Cristante. But most importantly, he's also versatile. He can play as defensive midfielder as well if we need him to slot into there. So there's a range of different things that he can do. We've also signed Matteo Gabbia on loan with a view to a permanent deal from AC Milan. Um, really pleased with this one. What I like to do is I like two players for every position. That's kind of the philosophy I always run by on Football Manager. And in pre-season, we started to get some injuries and I noticed we don't have that at centre-back, particularly with us playing three centre-backs. So we felt we needed some reinforcements there. I've gone with Matteo Gabbia. It's a loan deal with an option to make it permanent at the end of the season for 10 million. So that's really, really important as well. Naturally, he's someone who is really promising. If we have a look at his scout report, leading Serie B now, I don't anticipate that to be like that for long, to be honest. If you have a look at his, his attributes here, he, he looks good. We can rotate him in as well. Um, and, you know, he's got potential to be a leading Serie A player. So, really, really good. With Milan, he's obviously someone who, you know, they've got Simon Kiar there, obviously, but they've also got two young centre-backs who are really starting in Kalulu and Tamori. So he's kind of dropped down a pecking order a bit and he's only been a rotational option. As you can see, only, what, 16 starts across the last two seasons for Milan, only nine starts a season before that. So ultimately, I think he, he's not going to get that game time and he's going to get more here. We can rotate him in often. So really pleased with that one as well. Quick look at pre-season, a successful pre-season in the end. And, you know, I want to quickly point out this game at the start we played some team from indonesia and i got nothing out of that that was completely pointless doing that friendly 18 nil in the end you know what was the need honestly but other than that you know a decent preseason it hasn't told me too much about the tactics other than uh what it did cause me to do is i realized that we need something if we're trying to press the game you know if we're trying to uh, get back into the game if we feel like we're against a team that we should be kind of dominating uh, so as a result i've kind of made a, an attacking system as well and as you can see just changes the mentality a little bit we go attacking uh, the block pushes up a little bit we press a bit more um, and so hopefully uh, that can be or help us be a bit more versatile in those situations and be able to press the game even when we need to and so we come into the first game of the season nicely this is the line that we're going with you know, Gabby had come straight into the team as, unfortunately, Gianluca Mancini did pick up, pick up an injury uh, in pre-season, as did Rick Karstorp as well. Zaniolo, obviously, still injured. Uh, as you'll see, Spinazzola playing at right wing back, and that is because we're actually going to train him in that position. Uh, I prefer him in that position. I also want to try and get Zalewski at left back, um, and I want him to 
be in the first team. So as a result, I wanted to make room for Spinazzola. So we brought him at right back. He's a right-footed player. He's naturally a right back, but for the last few years, he has played at left back and converted to that position. So I have no qualms whatsoever about putting him into that position. Obviously, Smalling, Ibanez at centre-back. Nemanja Matic does come into defensive midfield. A little bit tricky. He's just come off an injury as well. We'll see how that one plays out. Pellegrini, Cristante in midfield. And then Paolo Dybala and Tammy Abraham up front. So obviously, you get massive benches these days. 15 subs. So we've got plenty of options to pick from, that is for sure. So I'm going to pump my fists and I'm going to say um, it's important. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Never mind. I'm not going to go in to uh, the whole thing and, and pump them all up it's okay um i'll do this quick match preview this this tunnel interview i don't know why we're not capable of, of turning up or getting a result here we've got a couple of easy games to start the season um so ultimately we've we've got to be looking to get the best out of that right so here's something that i know is going to be contentious straight away and that is i play exclusively on 2d classic that is the way forward for me i think 3d doesn't look very good I do show the replays in 3D, but for the actual game, I play 2D. Very, very traditional. I don't think 3D looks very good, to be honest. Uh, plus, you get a better view in 2D. You can kind of see all the shape and the line and positioning of players, etc. So, sticking with 2D. So, here's the first opportunity. Spinazzola taking that throw in. Ball comes back to Smalling. Matic dropping into that defensive line. Dybala dropping off. Obviously, it's going to be massively based around him. We need him to step up big time. Hopefully, we can keep him injury-free as well. As Spinazzola gets a ball into Tammy Abraham. And there's the first goal of the new season. A really nice header. Spinazzola on that right-hand side. Crossing it in from the byline. Does really well to keep that ball in. And Tammy Abraham is there on the end of it. Let's have another look at the replay on the volley as well. And Abraham rising up. Dragovsky really disappointed that he doesn't get that. Well, that's a really nice start to the season. 28 minutes gone, 1-0. Right, so coming in from the right-hand side, ball is out to Cristante. Oh, Abraham wins that one. Ball comes to Dybala, and there's the second. Oh, it could be offside. Goal checking. The VAR, it does count. It does count. He just stays on side. Kovalenko here passes it into. Uh, the centre-back and Abraham just presses really well really good from Tammy Abraham good counter pressing there lays it off to Dybala and that's a really really nice goal so at half time we're doing well so far I'm going to say don't let complacency settle in I like to do that often some players obviously don't react well to it but that's very important to me so on 60 minutes going to make a couple of substitutes here and the man your Matic can come off we're going to bring on Vatikanti youth player who we've got a lot of high hopes for uh, Pellegrini also not playing very well. I'll keep him on for now, though, because he is the captain. We're going to keep him going. Free kick for them. Central areas here. Oh, good save from Rui Patricio there. That's a good effort from them. Forces a corner in the end. Okay, so now time for a couple more subs. We are now going to take Pellegrini off. Uh, I'm actually going to bring on Jaliadini, and then I'm going to put Cristante into his position, um, as I think he can do that Metzala job better. Uh, we're also going to take off Dybala, just trying to wrap him in cotton wool, really. Uh, and we are going to bring on Bellotti for him as well. Jaladini. Oh, that's a really nice ball through to Abraham. A good save again from the keeper. Does well to deny Abraham there. Right, so working the ball up, Fatih Kante. Oh, a lovely ball through to Cristante. It's a really bad miss. That's a fantastic ball from the youngster in midfield. Berlotti drops deep, coming to get this one. Vinus on as a substitute. Fatty Canti looks to be playing really well. Celli through to Abraham. There's the third. Does he stay on side? They're going to check this on VAR. We're going to find out now because that was a nicely worked goal. And the goal is awarded. Tammy Abraham with his second of the game. That's brilliant. And Fatty Canti has come on and he's playing really well. He's spearheading a lot of the tacking moves. He really is. Nicely worked goal. And Tammy Abraham gets his third. Abraham brewing to this channel now. Out to Vigna. He'll rip it in. Belotti's there. Abraham's there. Another save from the keeper. And out for a throw-in. What a game this keeper is having. I can't believe he's only had a 6.7. He's absolutely been playing off the pitch at the moment. As we do get the win full-time. 3-0 in the end. A really solid win to start the season. Obviously, tougher tests will come, but Spectia still no pushovers. So a quick look at the results here as well. The most important one that I do want to point out is that uh, Inter actually beat Juventus in the opening game of the season 3-1. So that's a big one already. 
obviously in real life Juventus started off quite slowly and it looks like they're, they're doing the same in this save as well. So I also want to point your attention to this. I've had a, a deal agreed with Josip Chitalo now for a couple of weeks and I've actually been delaying it. Uh, he's a centre-back for any of you who don't know him from Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, really good player, promising player. Uh, good Serie A with leading Serie A potential. Uh, now, the reason why I'm kind of hesitating at this is because ultimately the deal is agreed for 6.5 million rising to 18.5. You know, all of the rest is in instalments. So we only have to pay 6.5 up front. Um, but I'm wondering, is he actually going to kind of get into the first team? And if so, is that too much to pay in our situation for a player who's only going to be a rotational option? Uh, like I say, he's a good player. I've had him, on, had him on last year to great success as well. But, you know, with the likes of Ibanez uh, and also Gianluca Mancini there, I don't think he's going to be a first-team player. And that's a lot of money in our situation. Um, you know, with our transfer budget only being 11 million, only a 22 million balance to be paying for a rotational player. So I am thinking that I'm, I'm probably going to pull out of that deal now. So we're now into the next game against Monza. Decided we're going to go again because that was really fun the last time. With regards to the lineup, we're keeping it as it is. Uh, unfortunately, Fatikanti played uh, in the youth team game, the under-20s game yesterday. So he's a bit tired. Um, that was a, an overlook on my part, really. Gianluca Mancini now back from injury, but as you can see, a long way off. Uh, full sharpness and fitness so he will stay on the bench and I will keep Gabby in the team um, and we're ready to go Monza of course newly promoted but with Silvio Berlusconi behind them a lot of investment there and you can see that you know they do have some really really good players so this is again by no means an easy game we've got to be right on it of course matching three back systems today We'll see how that one plays out. Gabio with a really nice aggressive interception. Dybala through to Abraham. And there is the first goal. That's really nice stuff. And that's why you have Paolo Dybala in your team. Just able to unlock and unpick the defence like that. Pellegrini with a short layoff to him. And he spots that run. In that deep line forward role, he's able to drop off a little bit. And that's what we do have in our front two. Really nice goal and a good way to start this game. So we've got a corner. Dybala to whip this one in. Smalling on the end of it. Oh, I think it hits the bar and goes over. Another corner here, Dybala. Gabia, Abraham, oh, he could be offside in that one. He definitely looked offside that time. We're going to have a look, VAR check. And the goal's awarded, he isn't. Wow, Tammy Abraham with his second of the game. Another brace. Gabia is the one who's on the end of it. And I'm just wondering, I think it's that, that centre-back there. I couldn't see who it was who plays him onside. And what a great way to come into half-time. It's been a dominant performance, as you can see on the stats. Haven't allowed them a single shot. So really good stuff so far. I'm going to say, I think we're doing well, but we can definitely find another gear to take this match. And that's what we're going to look to do. Swalling. Gabia. Oh, lovely ball from Dybala. It's a nearly a carbon copy of the first goal. Tammy Abraham threw. And that was a really nice play. And so we're coming up to full time here. It's been a very, very comfortable game and a really good result indeed. 2-0. Good to get another clean sheet on the books. Tammy Abraham with another brace. That's really, really uh, important. He's annoyed not to get the chance to complete his hat-trick. Um, but I knew that would be the case. But ultimately, we're trying to protect them as well. And so after two games, that's how the league table is looking. Milan, Napoli, Inter and Roma are the ones who have won both of their games so far. Now, obviously, we're coming into the game with a, a decent schedule opening, but next up, we do have Napoli. Now, whether or not I'm going to show that in the next episode, I'm not sure yet. I might go past that. We'll also have the Europa League draw. Obviously, we know who we're getting for that. And I think maybe we come back for this Lazio and Juve doubleheader because that'll be a really, really big one and a true test of where this team will be at in, what, October or so. Good to see Tammy getting such a good start to the season. Player of the match in both games. Already top scorer and top average rating as well so that's a terrific start from him really good isn't it two clean sheets for Rui Patricio as well can't be more pleased than that can we so I think we're gonna round this one off there it's been super fun to do this really really enjoyed it don't know why I haven't done FM video sooner to be honest but thankfully we are on it now so if you guys have enjoyed it I made it through to the end. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you want to see more, you want to see this series continue, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to let me know who your favourite and first teams to play as on FM23 were in that comment section. Don't forget to check out my brand new video games podcast. 
The links are down below, as are the links to my Patreon as well. You can get lots of fantastic perks and rewards on there. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload a video. And drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and want to see more. On that note, we're going to finish it there. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, I will see you soon.